Our Finkel passes away at the age of 69. The voice of our, my childhood, probably a lot of uh, everyone out there, a lot of your childhood as well. Um, one thing about Finkel is he kind of brought prestige into a title, a title change. You're familiar with the terminology I think that Finkel started using back then. And new MMA, boxing, everyone copies that whole and new. Not saying that, you know, Howard Finkel invented it, but that delivery, uh, I think, is mimicked by a lot of uh, people adding a little bit of their own twist. But same type of delivery, I think you could... Um, Trace that back to uh, Howard Finkel. Began announcing with the company in 77. Became the lead announcer by 79. Uh, I remember him back in the old days in MSG here, the house shows. And a distinctive voice. Uh, distinctive voice. Um, again, prestige, title changes. Boxing, MMA, the way they pronounce it, the way they enunciate it, all credit to uh, Howard Finkel. He's the one that came up, rumor is, with the word WrestleMania. For Ricky Steamboat, he's the one that supposedly said the dragon. So much so that his ideas were so like clitch, uh, like catchy, popular, that at one point um, he was invited to be uh, part of the creative department. Lead announcer for televised events in '84, and uh, you know he was that voice of the new WWF, and you know he seemed like um, yeah, charm, wit, personality. Part of some memorable storylines, if you remember, in 90, Finkel accepted a bribe from the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, to let um, DiBiase replace him for the match where Mr. Perfect defeated the Texas Tornado, one of my favorites, Kerry Von Erich, for the Intercontinental Championship. Fink, uh... Back then, remember, too, he was also involved in a long-running feud with Harvey Whippleman. The culmination of that was the tuxedo match. And he did win. <laughs> he won his match by stripping the, the Harvey Whippleman to his intimates, his underwear. In 98, you remember there was an angle with Jeff Jarrett he saved the Finkel's head. Finkel then aligned himself with X-Pac to help him defeat Jared in a hair versus hair match, and then helped him again in trimming uh, Jared's uh, hair. A year later, he would become the lackey for Chris Jericho, who kept referring to him as Harvey. During Jericho's feud with Shamrock, Finkel would pretend to be a masked referee called the Hell Dopo. <laughs> You know, he was subsequently lost to the Acolyte Protection Agency in a game of poker. The Fink Man was a pawn. Then in 2002, he began a feud with Lillian Garcia, culminated in a tuxedo versus evening gown match. While he easily outclassed Garcia... He briefly forgot who was in their respective corners when he tried to taunt her. He commented that blondes belonged on their backs, prompting Stacy Keebler and Trish Stratus to aid Garcia in stripping him. He must have been in heaven. And as a result of the match, Garcia replaced Finkel as the lead announcer on Raw. You know, Finkel would continue to return occasionally for pay-per-views and special events, you know, like tribute uh, to the troops. Um, you know, he did a lot of voiceovers for um, online video games. 
On WWE.com, there was a game that used to be called Beat the Fink. The game uh, challenged fans to test their knowledge of WWE, WCW, and ECW trivia. Hall of Famer and uh, in a Wrestling Observer Hall of Fame. He made appearances in every WrestleMania until WrestleMania in 2016. WrestleMania 32. So, just the history, the work is um, long. And he put up some work and uh, he's um, he contributed a lot. Um, You heard that, um, and actually, you know, you heard that, um, you know, he wasn't doing too well in recent years. Uh, but, man, uh, definitely had charisma, personality. You just chuckle when you read, uh, you know, reminisce some of his uh, storylines and introduction that he did. Like a thousand bucks, like a thousand bucks. I'm sure he made the talent uh, feel like. Hope all is well. Look forward to speaking to you guys very, very soon.